Hey River Church, welcome. My name is Pastor Billy Garza and thank you so much uh, for joining us today. Um, we're gonna get started here in a few hours. Uh, people are gonna come to the building and, and we're gonna worship together. Um, but if you join us online, we just thank you for coming. I would encourage you guys, if you are uh, at home and, and now would be a good time to, if you need to get a, a, another cup of coffee or if you need to uh, get something to write with, now would be the time to do that. Uh, we thank you and we love you and thank you for joining us. Good morning, River Church. Uh, I'm so glad that you guys are here. Today, we're going to be talking about anger. Um, but before we get into all of that, uh, some of y'all know me, some of y'all don't, uh, but, but I am uh, one of the pastors here at River Church. Uh, I am one of the, the leaders. I am not paid. I think we, we have Randy, who is our uh, paid pastor. I am not paid. I have a, a job uh, at, at a high school. I'm a high school football coach. And, uh, and so that's awesome. You know, I played sports as a kid. Uh, I grew up playing sports. I played uh, college sports, and it's just been awesome to do that. So, and so now I'm coaching, right? I, I work at a local high school, uh, and, and I have the opportunity to coach. Um, and so... I coach football. Uh, football is a demanding sport. There is a lot of preparation that goes into football. Um, since COVID-19 happened, we haven't really had the opportunity to meet since spring break. Like everything has been shut down. Um, well, this summer, uh, this past week actually, our schools began to open back up. And so uh, we're starting to see our kids again. Uh, and, and we're taking them through drills and we're doing the, the, the summer workouts and that whole deal. And um, it's, been really, it's been really fun. Uh, but part of coaching is being able to not only tell people what to do, but uh, at certain times you also have to show them what to do, right? And so, um, and, and so we, were, we were trying to get our kids back in shape. You know, there's a lot of conditioning that's happening. And we were doing this exercise. Um, and mind you, I have not done anything uh, for the past few months as well. And so, um, and so I'm, I'm teaching them through this, ex uh, walking them through this drill that we were performing. And it's, it's a drill where you have to really um, squat in a certain way. It's, it's all for hip flexibility. And, uh, and you know, it was fine. You know, I, I, I had to demonstrate the drill. We're going through stations. I had to demonstrate the, the drill uh, about, about probably about half a dozen times, about six times, and uh, you know it was fine, no big deal, right? Um, except it was a big deal. Uh, the next day, uh, we were at practice again, and my legs were killing me. And I'm like, what is going on? Like, why do my legs hurt so much? And sure enough, it was those those exercises that I was demonstrating. I, I mean, I could barely walk at the time. Um, and I was just like, man, am I, am I that out of shape? Am I, that, am I in that bad a condition right now that it hurts just to squat a couple times? Um, it, was, it was pretty depressing. Um, when this happens, I, I, I'm often, when I feel this soreness after working out, I'm often reminded of something that I heard uh, from Will Smith, right? Uh, they asked him like, hey, Will Smith, what's the key to like staying in shape and how do you keep your physique? And, and all this stuff, and he, and he said, uh, the best way to stay in shape is to never get out of shape. And I'm just like, man, uh, that, that does nothing for me because I'm already out of shape. Um, but he's right though, the more consistent we are uh, with our, 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 our working out, the easier our workouts become, the more we are capable of doing because of the way that we are uh, training our bodies. Um, what used to be hard is, is no longer hard. Um, now, 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 what we're talking about today in James is uh, that that's kind of his focus, right? He's, 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 he's pushing us to this this spiritual endurance that we have built, this, this testing, this, 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 this testing of our faith, this spiritual endurance, okay? He's, he's not focused on how many times you go to the gym, right? You, you, your gym attendance, he, he's, he's more focused on your spiritual attendance. Um, 
in, in, I'm sorry, not your spiritual attendance, but your, your faith, the practicing of your faith. Last week, Pastor Randy, uh, he talked about this. This was uh, one of his driving points. He really wanted us to understand that these endurance, uh, I'm sorry, these trials that we go through, uh, this testing of your faith produces uh, uh, this endurance, this ability to endure. Uh, and so we, we talked about that. We talked about that last week. Um, but today what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about a specific way uh, to practice our faith, right? To build this endurance. And, and in doing so, we're going to talk about anger, right? How, how, how to practice our faith when it comes to our anger. Uh, maybe you would be quick to admit that you struggle with anger. Um, if I were to ask you, uh, if you were to... If you, if you were, if you, hey man, do you, do you really struggle with anger? You would, yeah, that's, that's my kryptonite, man. I, I just cannot control my anger. Um, other, other people know somebody who cannot control their anger, right? Um, but, but you may readily admit that you, that you specifically struggle with anger. Others would say, you know what, Billy, like, I'm a pretty peaceful guy. I don't know how this sermon is really going to apply to me. And I would say that I think all of us struggle with anger to some degree. Uh, it may not look the same. It may not manifest itself the same way. But, but all of us, we, we struggle with anger. We struggle with, with becoming upset. Um, and so as we spend our time today, I hope to show you, uh, how, how, give you some, uh, some, some, um, uh, give you a, a blueprint to how to deal with anger, but more importantly, I hope to show you guys that, that, that our anger and, and how we work through our anger is, is a gospel issue, right? How, it, how it's, uh, uh, there's, there's so many gospel implications to uh, the anger that we struggle with. Okay, so uh, we're going to be in the book of James. Before, before, we, before we get into James, I want to talk a little bit about uh, just give you some backdrop uh, to this letter, right? Um, <clears throat> so James is writing to these 12 tribes in the dispersion. And basically what that means is he's writing to uh, Jewish Christians who have been dispersed throughout the area, right? They're no longer in one place. They're, they're kind of spread out. They've been dispersed out, okay? Uh, and what's happening to these people is they are being... Uh, persecuted, right? There, there, there is persecution happening to them, right? There is fighting that is happening amongst them. Um, it, it's not pretty. They, they are blaming God for their shortcomings, and they are trying to receive the praise for the things that they do well. Uh, the alarming part to this is that they know better. They know better, right? Uh, I said earlier that, that his audience was, 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 were the Jewish Christians. With the Jewish Christians, what that means um, is, is that, that these people are, are the people that grew up in the church, right? They grew up uh, with the Bible stories. They would know the Bible stories well. Uh, they would be familiar with all of the Jewish and the religious customs and the holidays. Um, and they would be familiar with all of that. Okay, they would know, uh, figuratively speaking, when to stand, when to sit. Uh, all of those things, right? They'd know this stuff. But they would also be the people that Jesus described or accused of, of honoring Jesus with their lips, but not with their hearts. Their hearts were far from him. So it's this double-mindedness, right? This, this knowing uh, what is right, but then doing what is not right. This double-mindedness that James is writing into. He's writing into this double-mindedness, right? He's encouraging them uh, to have their outward actions be in line with their inward beliefs. Now, with that, let's, let's, let's jump into the text. Um, we're going to be in James chapter 1, uh, verses um, 19 through 20. 
I'm sorry, 19 through 26. Um, and, but, but we're going to kind of piece it together. Okay, so we're not going to go through all of it at once, but we're going to piece it together. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna talk about each part uh, individually. So for right now, we'll be in James chapter 1, uh, verses 19 and 20. And it reads like this. It says, My dear brothers and sisters, understand this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. For human anger does not accomplish God's righteousness. Now, quick observation. James' desire in this letter, he, he wants them to walk in righteousness. What that means, he wants them to walk rightly with God. Uh, he wants them to be saved, to be submitted to Jesus. And he says here, he says here in this, this, these two verses that, that human anger, that human anger does not accomplish this. Um, now, now, before we go on, I'd like to clarify uh, two things. Okay? Uh, to, be to be clear, there is God's righteous anger. Now, that anger is defined basically by hating the things that God hates. That's not what we are talking about today. We're talking about human anger, right? So God in his perfect, uh, his perfect creation, his perfect law, uh, is loving uh, good and hating evil, right? That, that is the, the righteous anger. That is not what we're talking about today, okay? We're talking about human anger. And then the second thing is, uh, that I would like to clarify is that anger is not necessarily a bad thing. Anger tells us that something isn't right. Anger is, is what we feel inside when, you know, we're watching the news or, or, or you slip your shoe on and there's a rock and you're like, oh, why is it like that? That feeling that you feel, that's telling you that something is not right. Um, today we're not necessarily talking about that feeling of anger, but how that anger is, it manifests itself, how that anger plays out, right? <clears throat> uh, so Paul says, be angry and do not sin. Today we're talking about when we act out or when this anger uh, just controls our lives. Uh, and this, this, the, again, this human anger that controls our lives. So, the question, naturally, uh, after we've talked about this, you know, the question is, uh, what is human anger? Uh, anger is defined as a strong feeling of annoyance, displeasure, or hostility. Uh, so, so that's kind of this, 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 the definition of anger. And I want to start uh, by saying why anger happens. All right. Anger, anger happens. Anger first begins uh, as a result of some sort of unmet expectation. All right. And these these unmet expectations lead to this conflict. Um, so think about it in a very practical way. Right. Uh, you have this idea of, of this 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 expectation. And then this expectation is not met, okay? Um, so very practical. Uh, you go to Whataburger. Uh, you're super hungry. You've been working all day. You've got sweat all over your body, right? Or, or just your elbows or whatever. whatever. However you work, you're working, you're hungry, right? Um, you go to Whataburger, you're like, man, I love number twos with cheese. That's my jam. And, but you don't like the onions, right? Whatever you do, just do not include the onions. And so you get this burger, you take a bite, and the first thing that you taste is the onions. You're like, ugh, this, this anger, right? You, expectation of no onions, then you get your onions, right? I know that's kind of like a petty example. Um, but but it's, 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 
it's your it's your it's your wife right when 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 or in this case this happened to me uh my wife had this expectation i was going to go out with some friends of mine um just go hang out go watch i think we we're going to watch the super bowl or watch some football game and uh, it was like seven o'clock and and she was like okay sweetheart be home in like an hour be home at eight and i was like okay i'll try that's not going to happen because who watches one hour worth of football it's just in my mind i was like man this isn't going to work but i tried I didn't get home till like 11, right? Everything was pitch black, okay? My wife had this expectation that I would be home soon. I took forever, unmet expectations, okay? Uh, kiddos, right? Uh, you, you, you kiddos who are watching, it's, it's the expectation of, hey, dad said he's gonna play with me today. Then dad gets called into work and daddy doesn't get to play with you today. Uh, the expectation of playing with dad is not met, right? It's the, 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 the situation of a, a, a husband who, who has been working all day. He comes home and he's hungry. He wants to eat to find, and he, so he comes home and he finds out there's no food, right? Upset, angry, this, this, this feeling inside of you. Or maybe you're in, a, in, in, in traffic, right? And, and someone behind you is honking their horn. There's something about the way a horn sounds that is just very annoying, right? Uh, but, 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 but that gets you upset, right? Or, or, or as you're driving, uh, someone does not cater to the way uh, that you drive. They, they, they're, they're doing their own thing and they cut you off and, and this anger inside starts to build right? Again, I want to remind you guys that anger by itself necessarily isn't a bad thing. It tells us, it, it tells us like, hey, something is not the way that we thought it was going to be. It, 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 um, it, it sharpens our focus, if you will. Um, but, but again, Paul tells us, be angry, be angry, and do not sin. The, the not sinning is the hard part. The not letting the anger that is inside us control us, right? That is the hard part. And so when does, when does, uh, when does human anger become bad? And I would say that human anger becomes bad when we allow it to control us. So, what does anger look like? What does anger look like? How does anger act out? Um, in counseling, there's this, there's this model when, when people deal with conflict and they're upset. They usually resort to this in two types of ways, right? Uh, and, and this is known as the fight or flight model, right? Fight, like I'm going to fight, or flight, like I'm going to fly, right? Um, Sorry, I'm not flying right now, but... <clears throat> and so I want, to, I want to talk about these, okay? Uh, the first we'll talk about is the, the fight model. And this is exactly how it's described, right? You get upset and you're going to fight, right? And I'm sure you've seen this before. Like, this is the obvious uh, way that people think about anger, right? They're, they're going to fight. Uh, if something doesn't go according to plan, they are upset and everybody knows it. Right? They want to combat the situation. They, they, they want to impose their will to control uh, what is going on. Right? Uh, and, and so, they, so they, they speak out. They lash out. Right? And as they do this, uh, they, they, they just get angry. Right? And, and if there's resistance to them, then they just raise their voice a little bit louder. Um, they, 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 they do what they have to do to control the situation. Um, and in its extreme, they're, they're, they, it turns into physical anger, right? Uh, to, to really, really hurting somebody. Okay? Uh, their relationships are strained. Their families don't know what they're going to get, who this person is. They don't know what to expect from this person. The family walks on eggshells. 
because they don't, they, 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 they creep around the house because they know that, man, anything can set, anything can set dad off, right? And, and their friendships, their relationships aren't any better. Um, it, it, it's, hard, it's hard for them to find meaningful relationships uh, just because it's very tough for them to connect with people, right? That's the, that's the fight model. <clears throat> and so, as I said, when, when you hear the, the word anger, right, this is naturally what you associate that anger to be, to be like. This is what you would say that anger looks like. Now then there's a flip side to that, right? The, the, the flip side is this, this flight model, okay? And this is the exact opposite, okay? Uh, instead of confronting the situation, instead of fighting the situation, instead of uh, imposing your will into the situation, you remove yourself from the situation. You're going to flee the situation. Uh, this person's life is characterized by ignoring situations. These are the people that bottle things up, that, 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 that keep things inside. They, they never say anything, right? Everything always looks good, but inside there is this anger that is, that is brewing. Uh, they ignore things. Their way to deal with their relationships, this tension, is just to avoid, to avoid them, right? Uh, if they find themselves in an undesirable situation, they will just avoid that person or that situation. Maybe there's tension at the home, and maybe nobody talks about it for like a week or two until everybody just kind of forgets about it, right? But, but, that's, but that's not what, what is happening here. Below the surface, as we said, this anger is building. And, right, and then one day, this person just explodes. Explodes. All the stuff that has been bottled up either comes out, right? Uh, but, but in this extreme force, you, or I'm sorry, in this, extre- in, in this example, uh, what it looks like at its extreme is a person completely avoiding the situation Right? Uh, if they cannot maintain uh, the peace that they want after having uh, removed themselves from the situation, man, they'll be, they, they, they may just put their house up for sale and, and move to a different city, right? It's all about fleeing, uh, removing yourself, getting as far away from this feeling, this, this, this anger, this, this situation as possible. Now, as we go on, I would like I would like to say two things. One, that both of these uh, about about the fight or flight model. What I'd like to say is both of these are wrong, and 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 here's why. Right, these actions, this fighting or this fleeing, they drive a wedge in our relationships. The first one is it, it drives a wedge between you and between people. So this, this wedge between your relational uh, life, you know, you and your friends, you and your family, you and your children, uh, you and your coworkers, there's this wedge that is driven into there. Um, but, but it also drives a wedge between you and God. Right? Anger puts you in the seat. And, and makes you the judge. And, and it makes other people subject to your law, to bow down to you. You've replaced God in, on the throne, right? And nobody bows down to what God is saying because they're going to bow down to me. You're, you're putting that wedge there. And as Christians, this is the opposite of what we're called to. God has called us to love him and to love people. Like that's what we are called to as Christians. Love the Lord with all your heart, mind, and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself, right? This, this fight or this flight, uh, this type of 
acting of our anger, this type of uh, anger when it, it manifests, is, does neither of those two. It doesn't love God and it does not love our neighbors. I want, to, I want to read a story to you from Genesis chapter 4. And we see a beautiful picture, uh, well, not a beautiful picture, but we see a picture of this modeled, right? <clears throat> it's in Genesis chapter 4, uh, verses 2 uh, through 8. And so this is a story of Cain and Abel, right? And so Adam and Eve are born uh, or created. And, and then so, so Cain and Abel are Adam and Eve's children, right? Um, and so the story is, is in Genesis chapter 4. It says, Now Abel became a shepherd of the flocks, but Cain worked the ground. In the course of time, Cain, Cain presented some of the land's produce as an offering to the Lord, and Abel also presented an offering, some of the firstborn of his flock and their fat portions. The Lord had regard for Abel and his offering, but he did not have regard for for Cain and his offering. Cain was furious and he looked despondent. Right? Cain had this, this expectation that wasn't met. Right? He expected God to receive his offering and that wasn't the case. And as a result of this, he becomes angry. He becomes furious, the text says. Moving on. Then the Lord uh, said to Cain, Why are you furious? And why do you look despondent? If you do what is right, won't you be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at the door. Its desire is for you, but you must rule over it. This is exactly what James is talking about. Right? Sin, according to this right here, sin has not hit him yet. At this point, all this anger has done is pointed him to some sort of problem. Right? He needed to, to figure out how he was going to respond to this. And the text goes on and says, Cain said to his brother Abel, Hey, let's go out into the field. And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Boom. Sin entered the picture. Right? The wedge was driven between Abel, uh, Cain and Abel. Okay? Cain, as a result of this, Cain became a wanderer in the land. So there's this relational wedge and this vertical, this vertical wedge. So where does, where does that leave us? Where does that leave us? <clears throat> We're going to read, uh, continue on in our, in our James passage, um, starting in verse 21. It says, Therefore, ridding yourselves of all moral filth, and the evil that is so prevalent, okay, so it's, it's not just the anger. I mean, here he's saying, like, everything. I mean, we've been talking about anger, but he's talking about all moral filth and the evil. Get rid of these things. He says, humbly receive the implanted word which is able to save your souls. But, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. But the one who looks intently to the perfect law of freedom and perseveres in it is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer who works. This person will be blessed in all he does. So I, I want to give us some application points. Uh, I'm going to give us some application points, and then I'm going to give us a... a, a um, a model for how to resolve conflict. But the first thing that we have to come to the conclusion on, the first thing that we have to feel, is that we hate our sin. We hate our anger. We hate the way that we treat people, right? <clears throat> James 1, 6 through 8 says, uh, But let him... Let him ask in faith without doubting, for the doubter is like the surging sea, driven and tossed by the wind, uh, that, uh, driven and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord, being double-minded and unstable in all of his ways. Man, you got to hate the sin 
And I know the sin sometimes looks so appealing and so, and so attractive, but we have to hate it. We cannot be double-minded on this matter. Okay? Once, we have, once we have said, Lord, I hate, I hate my sin. Deliver me from my sin. The next thing, and this is point number two, application point number two, is, is pray for wisdom. All right, James 1 5 says, Now, if anyone lacks, if any one of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God, who gives to all generously and ungrudgingly, and it will be given to him. Hate your sin, determine that you hate it, determine that you want change. Lord, show me how. Pray for wisdom. can't be this double-mindedness that we see. We cannot be double-minded. Determine that you hate it and pray for wisdom. And then the third, the third point is to submit to God and to resist the devil. Okay, this is in James 4, 7, and 8. It says, therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. It's saying that, that as you hate your sin, as you're praying for wisdom, it's, it's saying that if you uh, submit to the Lord, right, which is, which is hating your sin and praying to God for the strength, if you do that and you resist the devil, the devil will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. <clears throat> Good. Now that, now that we have talked about that, I kind of want to give you a, a practical tool that you could use. Um, this tool is not necessarily crafted from Scripture, uh, but, but this it will be super helpful to help you be able to get through some of these, uh, these situations where you find yourself a little bit upset or a little bit angry. Okay, and, and usually the, these are, these are uh, an interpersonal, so, so me with my wife or, or me with my friends. Okay, now, now again, this is only after, man, after we've come to the point where we hate our sin. This is after we're praying for uh, the wisdom, asking God to help us. This is after we are actively trying to fight. This is a tool that you could use. Okay, now, as you're, as you're implementing this tool or this plan, uh, uh, the part where James says you must be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger, man, that's all over what I'm about to teach, uh, what I'm about to share with you guys. Okay, because as let's let's face it, as we get into start to discuss some of these things that make us angry, man, walls go up. Um, your 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 defensiveness kicks in, and you want to argue. So. Must be, must be quick to listen, slow to speak, and sl slow to anger as we are, are, are using this tool. Okay? Now, now, this tool has five steps. All right? The first is to, uh, whenever you're in this, this conflict, this anger, um, obviously, as we talked about, this anger is a result of an unmet expectation. Right? So the first thing you want to do is identify what that expectation was. What did you expect to happen? Okay, and, and then obviously that didn't happen and now you're upset, but, but figuring out what your expectation was. Okay, as you work through these issues, you really want to know what issue you're working through. Okay, so identify the expectation. Identify what you hoped what happened? That's the first thing. The second thing is to understand the expectation. Okay, so, so, so not only identify, not only look at that expectation, but you also want to understand it. You want to know what all of that means. Okay? <clears throat> um, so so uh, to, to, to put a, a picture to this, um, when, when I came home that night and my wife was upset because I was out way later than I was supposed to be or that she expected me to be, right? Uh, the first thing was uh, she was upset, so uh, we had to sit down and identify what it was that she was upset, upset about. And the second thing is I had to understand it, okay? We both had to understand what, 
what we were, uh, uh, why this tension was between us. So that involved asking questions, right? What does it, what does it mean uh, when you said this? What did you mean by that? What did you hope would happen? Okay, understand all the nuances of the issue. The third thing is determine if that expectation was a realistic expectation, right? My, my wife could be mad at me because uh, I can't fly, but you know what? That's an unrealistic expectation, at least outside of a plane. <laughs> but you understand, what I'm, that's an unrealistic thing for her to expect of me, okay? Um, but but that, that's what you want. You want to determine if this is possible, okay? If it's not a possible thing, then you need to rethink the expectation, okay? The fourth step is uh, develop some sort of plan to meet this expectation, right? Uh, so my wife wants me uh, to be home at a specific time. Uh, I will develop some sort of plan, okay? Well, about 30 minutes earlier, I got to start you know, saying goodbye or doing whatever it is I need to do in order to ensure that I will uh, 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 be where I need to be when I said I was going to be there, right? Develop some sort of plan. And then the last step is to implement this plan, to do this plan, and to constantly ask for feedback, okay? You want to follow up with this, right? Sweetheart, I know we had this issue a few months ago. I've been working on it. We had this plan in place, okay? Is it is it working? Are, are we making progress? Do we need to uh, sit down and look at the situation again? Okay, so I'll just state those five again just so you, 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 you'll have them. Number one, identify the expectation. Number two, understand this expectation. Number three, determine if it's a realistic expectation. Okay, then develop some sort of plan to meet this expectation, uh, and then act and follow up, right? Implement this plan and follow up with it, okay? Um, again, all that is just a, it's a tool that I have found helpful, but this does not work. This has no lasting effect, man. With <clears throat> This has no lasting effect without hating your sin, without praying for wisdom, without submitting to King Jesus, right? So in closing, I want to read today's passage from James again. <clears throat> it's like he's talking to us, right? My dear brothers and sisters, understand this. Everyone should be quick uh, to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. For human anger does not accomplish God's righteousness. Therefore, ridding yourselves of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, humbly receive the implanted word which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Because if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer of the word, he is like someone looking at his face in a mirror, for he looks at himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of person he was. But the one who looks intently into the perfect law of freedom and perseveres in it and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer who works this person will be blessed in what he does. As we are doers of the word, as we are submitting to Jesus, as we are pursuing Jesus, may we be blessed. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you for uh, your word. Um, Lord, I pray over our hearts. I pray over this feeling of, uh, that, that we have of anger, Lord. I pray that, that, that you grow us uh, to, to love the things that you love and to hate the things that you hate, Lord. Um, Lord, I pray that, that our human anger that, that, that feel, fills our hearts, 
right, and that fuels our actions. Lord, I pray that we, we submit that to you. Uh, I pray that, Holy Spirit, I pray that you empower us, you give us the strength to do these things. I pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. I'd now like to invite you uh, to the table of communion. Um, this is Jesus' blood and body uh, for us. Um, on the night that he was to be betrayed, he, he he was talking with his disciples. He said, "When you do this, when when you when you drink of this cup and when you eat of this bread, do so remembering me, remembering my uh, my my life, remembering what I have done for you on the cross." Right? His 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 blood was poured out for us. Right? His 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 flesh was crushed for us so that we may have life in him. Uh, so, so, I, so I'd invite you uh, to wherever you're at, uh, with your elements, uh, with your bread and, and, and your, your juice, uh, I would invite you to uh, join us in communion. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, you can come to our website, uh, shoot us an email, and we would love to hear from you guys, love to answer some of your questions. Um, we also uh, would encourage you to uh, continue uh, in your giving. Um, uh, we love you and we are blessed by your generous gifts. Um, uh, we would just uh, encourage you to continue to, to do so. It's super easy. It's, it's all on the website. Um, and yeah, and we thank you. Thank you for uh, those gifts. Um, it's been a pleasure to be with you guys today. Uh, and I'm looking forward to uh, being with you guys again soon.